How's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to continue our VMware Data Center Virtualization Series by taking a look at deploying a Windows VM and then installing VMware tools on it. This is going to be a very common thing that you guys are going to have to do in production, so it's good to start this process off whether you're doing it inside of vSphere or inside of vCenter Server. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to be doing. Welcome back everybody, and thanks for stopping by. I'm gonna go ahead and deploy a second VM on this host. We're gonna go ahead and click on Create and Register VM. Click Next, and I'm gonna call this VM2-Windows. And I'm gonna come down here, the guest OS is gonna be Windows. The version will be Server 2012 64-bit. Click Next. And we're going to say, yeah, that's fine with that storage location. And it's going to try to grab a big hard drive space, which is fine. But one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this guy out. And we want to check thin provisioned. So we only chew up the space we need to. And that's enough RAM. I think we're good to go there. Host device will be data store ISO file. We're going to choose server 2012 R2. Select that and then click finish and we're going to be good to go. So that'll get that part kicked off. I'm going to go ahead and select the VM. I'm going to kick off the install process. So we'll go through that very, very similar steps that we just did with the Linux VM. So we'll get that guy rolled out and operational here in just a few minutes. So I'm going to pause, well, I'll pause as we're going along, but this process will take a couple of moments. All right, so we're going to click inside of here, and as you can see, the experience is absolute just garbage. So that's why we'll need VMware tools. I'm going to click Next to go through the install process here. This does take a couple of clicks to get the process started, and then we will get the installation knocked out. So this is going to take a little bit longer than the Linux install did just because of the fact that it's a much larger operating system base file size. So I'm going to go ahead and pause until we're at a place where we can interact, which is like right now. So we're going to choose data, uh, Windows Server 2012 R2 standard evaluation with a GUI. Click on Next. And then accept license terms. Next. Custom install, 40 gig hard drive, and next, and we'll be off to the races with the install. So it'll be a hurry up and wait kind of deal. So I'm gonna pause until we can uh, do do something more. All right, so we are at the point where we can issue a password. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a password. And click on finish. So it'll go ahead and it will let me Log in, so I'm going to go Actions, Guest OS, Send Keys, Control, Alt, Delete, and uh, log in like so. And then what I'm going to go do is kick off the VMware Tools install, which is much, much easier to do on Windows than it is on Linux. Far, far easier. So our license will remain expired until we have an opportunity to connect a, an external device to it. And I will show you a way of fixing that here in just a second. There is a way to get a evaluation copy of an operating system deployed in a closed environment, but giving it access to get licensed and then closing it back off again. So we go ahead and minimize server manager. Let's go to actions. And we're going to go to guest OS and then install VMware tools. And well, we should get a little pop up here that tells us to do VMware tools. It usually takes a couple seconds for it to trigger. And once it does, we'll get a little pop up up here just like that and then run the 64 bit setup and then we'll be able to go forward and 
we will install VMware tools, we'll reboot, and then I'll show you guys how to get the license taken care of. It's actually pretty simple to do. All right, so we're going to go ahead and click on next for the installation wizard and just next, next, and then install. And we'll be in good shape to do that. You'll see some flickering and whatnot that'll take place. And eventually the server will do its thing. So I'll pause until it's completely done. All right, well, so we're almost done with the VMware tools install. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get on there and literally it just finished up. So I'm going to click on finish and no, I'm not going to restart right this second. I'm going to go to actions and then edit settings. And what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to change the network adapter from data to VM network. So here I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this checkbox, go to host device, come down here, go to VM network, click on save. And what I will do is a quick thing you can do here is if you were to do a ping to say 10.255.1.50 if that IP address responds then I get a destination host unreachable so if I go to that response so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click here change this IP address to be that IP so Ethernet 0, Properties, IPv4, Properties, and then in here, 10.255.1.55. That is what I just pinged, right? 50. Okay. I'll make that a 50, slash 24, and... Uh, 10.255.1.1 and then quad 8 will be my Google or my DNS server and then I'm going to click on OK close close and I'm going to then go to the start and then yes we want to I'm going to click no and what should end up now we have internet access now if I go to here and I type in Charlie Mike Dave for the command prompt click on the command prompt and then if I was to pin this to the taskbar and then come up here and say ping google.com sometimes that'll trigger the evaluation or the licensing or you can go to the server manager and you can go to local server give that a couple seconds to do its thing and then it says it's activated right there if we were to refresh that I'm gonna go ahead and minimize it says that it's activated but it says the Windows license is expired so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on the start menu go up here to the power op power button and then restart and click on continue so that'll reboot and hopefully when it reboots and we can bring it back online It'll be licensed and we'll be good to go. All right, so the server rebooted, so I'm going to go to Actions. I'm going to go to Guest OS and Send Keys, Control Alt Delete. We go ahead and log in again. And there we go. Excellent. So sometimes the reboot is all that you need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this down just a little bit so we have a little more real estate to play with. And I'm actually going to go back to the edit settings. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. I'm going to change this from VM network to back to data. And because there's DHCP in enabled, I'm also going to go right click here. Because it won't, even though that it's there, it won't actually get an IP address. We'll go to here, Open Network and Sharing Center, Ethernet Zero, Properties, IPv4 Properties, and then obtain a, an address automatically. Close that out, 
come up here and do a IP config and we have an IP address 10.1.130 so if I was to come up here and ping ping 10.1.3.129 I'm able to ping that IP address that IP address you might be like well what IP address is that Rob well that IP address ladies and gentlemen should be my Linux VM so let's go ahead and pull the Linux VM up go ahead and log in real quick to the server give that a couple seconds right click on the desktop go open terminal and do a once it loads up an if config if config and we can see that we are 129 so if I hit the if I type in ping 10.1.3.130 this guy is not responding and you might be like why is it not responding well the answer to that question is actually very very simple because it's being blocked by the firewall so if I was to right click here open network and sharing go to Windows firewall and go to advanced settings We know it's not any blocking at the port group level because we were able to ping from Windows to um, Linux. The server has a implicit deny rule. So we're going to go and create a new rule, custom rule, and we're going to go ahead and let me search this out just a little bit more. And we're going to say, yes, we're going to click on next. Next, we're going to go ahead. The protocol type is going to be ICMP v4. And then next, 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 next. And then in here, ICMP underscore in. Click on finish. And now we have a rule there. And now the ping, notice that the ping starts to work right away. So that, ladies and gentlemen, tells me that everything's working the way that it should be. So we have communication working and everything is good. So that, ladies and gentlemen, tells me that I am operational. So we've covered several different aspects so far of, and this is basic VMware, ladies and gentlemen. This is basic VMware. This is nothing complicated yet. Keyword, yet. So with that being said, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me, and I will see all of you in the next video. Thanks, everybody.